And we have some breaking news from Palantir. Our very own Morgan Brennan joins us with more on this front. Morgan, good morning. Good morning. It's good to be here on set with you guys. Well, this is a high-profile win for Palantir. The defense tech startup awarded the U.S. Army's Titan program. This was picked over an industry stalwart, RTX, marking the first time a software company becomes a prime contractor of a big hardware program. Titan, or Tactical Intelligence Targeting Access Node, this is a mobile ground station that accesses data from terrestrial and space sensors. It uses AI to help provide more precise targeting for long-range precision strikes and battlefield planning. Palantir, as Palantir puts it, it's deploying the Army's, quote, first AI-defined vehicle. First contract, $178 million to develop and deliver 10 prototypes, working with subcontractors that include Northrop Grumman, L3 Harris, and startup Andrel Industries. It's not the biggest ticket program, but it is significant. The engineering and manufacturing development phase estimated to be about $400 million. And this is big for Palantir, though. This represents the company's fourth largest contract by annual revenue run rate. That's per a recent William Blair note. And it boosts the government portfolio as growth in Palantir's U.S. commercial business has been surging. Also reflects the role that AI will and already increasingly is playing on the battlefield. And as you can see right there, shares of Palantir moving higher right now in the pre-market, up about 3%. All right, for the layperson, dropping an AI box like this on the battlefield means what? You can see where the enemy's moving or it can predict where the enemy's going to move? I... Yeah, so it, it, all of that. So it's this whole idea of long-range precision targeting data. So basically being able to pull data from space centers and uh, space sensors and terrestrial, air, land, uh, take all that data, basically boil it down, run it through AI models, essentially, I'm assuming, and, um, and then be able to take that and have a more precise locator for whatever it is you're looking on the battlefield that's not within plain sight that's further away. That's a big deal. Yeah. Or just use a nuke and get rid of everything in the air. But this don't you be, want the most precise <clears throat> information and kidding. targeting I, I'm, data I, I'm cynical, before? I, I'm cynical about, uh, about how scary everything is and, mm. and hypersonic weapons that I guess we yeah. don't have. And, you know, Putin's talking about a, a, well, nuke, then, a nuke on a satellite. And it just, I mean, I, I it, mean it, is, it is a very, from that perspective, right. that you can have a more surgical. You need to strike. have, it, we need to, to cover all our bases, the, both the surgical and I guess we need to. Well, and, and this is one of those arguments against regulating AI, right? That like you can talk about it, you yeah. can talk about societal impacts and what this means for the country domestically, but what happens when you do have adversaries like right. China, like Russia, but, but particularly yes, it, China, harnessing all this data, not necessarily applying the same ethics to the way but, they're developing this and weaponizing that software. But then other people would say the last, thing we need, the, the last thing we need to do is use AI for warfare, would be the other argument. One's but, offensive, one's defensive, I guess. Yeah. And I, I would say that the U.S. military and the Pentagon have been very deliberate in terms of how they have been rolling out the guidelines and the ethics around where this gets implemented, how it gets implemented, uh, and what that looks like, for example. And Greg Hayes from RTX has talked about this, mm -hmm. and other defense contractors, the fact that there, there's always some sort of human decision within um, you know, a, a, kill, a kill chain process. Um, it's not but just right. the AI making all the decisions when lives are at stake. AI with the Iron Dome or with the Patriot that probably make it even better than it is right now, I guess. So, like anything, it would be used for good or, or evil. Right? Exactly. It's not wanting to fall behind in the arms race, though. Right. It's part of that. I, who's reading this? I think it's Morgan uh, reading later this. Later today, oh. we should point out on Closing Bell Overtime, Morgan's going to be talking more about this with Palantir's CTO, Shyam Sankar. Am I saying that right? Yeah, Shyam Sankar. This is an exclusive interview with Palantir's CTO about this news and so much more. This has been, of course, one of those AI beneficiaries in terms of the stock surge we've seen this year and last.